Hey everyone, welcome and thank you for joining me. My name is Marlene and I am with A Room to Bloom. So just as I was preparing to bring forth this message, um, I, I'm using a device that had the temperature on it outside, which is 71 degrees. And then the charge on the device was at 71%. So this is like a repeating number, like synchronicity. So what I decided to do uh, for the purpose of this message, because I was uh, just coming on here, is I, I'm opening up the Doreen Virtue book, Angel Numbers, and the number 71 says, you are on track with your desires and manifestations. Just stay positive and optimistic, and all of your dreams will be right there for you, right? So when you are seeing that number, if that is coming up, um, in your awareness, right? This is the encouragement of staying positive and optimistic in that direction of your dreams, right? Um, when things come in your way, there's a reason. There might be a small delay, but understand that you have a spirit team that is working on the un other side of the veil to help things unfold for you, to reach your highest and best potential, right? So don't let things discourage you, just stay optimistic and move in more into wonder instead of worry. Um, because it can be like, oh, I wonder what they're doing. I wonder where this is going to lead me. I wonder who I'm going to meet along the way. I wonder who I might be able to inspire. I wonder how God is going to work through me to help another, right? And so when we look into that, um, I'm getting goosebumps as I speak on that, right? So God uses us all in various ways on our journey. And so really asking yourself, have you been in worry and can you shift to wonder? Okay, so we are going to um, take a couple messages from the, <laughs> well, the ancestor um, oracle. I did draw to, I started to do a reading, but I wanted to um, read the cards from the book. So I think before I do that, though, I'll just hold on to those and we'll see if they re-arrive. <laughs> All right, what would you like to show us here for the collective that would be helpful for staying optimistic and positive on their journey? What messages do you have for the collective? Oh, it is the card. Okay, this is one of them, and it was the first one that came up before. It is Earth, and it speaks about being a life giver. Okay, so here we have like elementals um, touching a person who is resting, right? Um, being the giver of life. Okay, we're going to go a little bit further. I'm going to read from the book here. We have performer and actor. Okay, is that something that you are thinking about, right? Staying positive and optimistic about what it is that you are doing. Okay, we're going to go a little bit further. Master ancestor DNA adaption, right? Think about that when people... <laughs> are um, performing or acting, what do they oftentimes have to do? They have to adapt to situations that come up, right? Um, so, and adapting to your your DNA. Okay, we're gonna go a little bit further. This is does not surprise me. The healer card is coming out here. We have compassion, right? So you could be a healer. Interesting, we have the life giver card and same thing. The These elementals are um, reaching out. It's like they are healing this person, right? Um, so having compassion for others. See, as we, as we move along our journey, and if we're living in worry, then then we're, we're not in this present moment. It can be hard to see those who really can use some healing, some compassion, right? So it really calls you to be here in each moment. Let the worry go and move more into wonder and trust the journey. Having compassion for yourself and others. Um, instinct, trusting your instincts in situations, okay? We have an animal, right? So animals have instincts that are innate and we do as humans as well, right? Instinct, intuition, 
that gut feeling, that's like that solar plexus thing. When something is saying something's off or something's really right, my instinct says yes, right? Or my instinct says no or not today, right? Um, it's about aligning energies and such. Trusting your instinct in a situation. This this bobcat looks like he's ready to take a leap, but then looks back for a minute um, before taking that leap, right? What are your instincts saying? So we're going to use this book and see what this speaks on on the earth. Um, these are not, oh wait, there's the earth, but okay. So the Earth Life Giver, it says, it is with the sustenance of this very planet, sometimes referred to as Mother Earth or Grandmother Earth, that all physical life is created. She has many names in different cultures, yet all imply the fundamental characteristic as Life Giver. She is the supreme alchemist, working her miracles every moment and every day by collaborating with the primordial ancestors in the continual dance of birth, death, and resurrection. Flowing along in the wondrous and temptuous dance of effortless creation, the cycle of creation always implies the component of death, acknowledging the contribution of all that has come before in order to nourish the beings that are birthed into physical reality and those who are yet to come. In some traditions, offerings and prayers are made before planting season as everyone waits until there is a clear communication from earth that it is time to get to work. When the time is right to plant, she lets us know when the time is right to release the physical form through death, she will let us know. You know what's really interesting is the other card that had come up before was plant and it spoke on seeds. So it says you have forgotten your connection to the natural world as you have found yourself obsessively preoccupied with the mundane human made world. That is so interesting because I have another message that goes just with this. It's time to make a radical shift to deeply appreciate your intimate connection with the earth mother that has been lost along the way. Walk outside to remember this. Bring to your awareness the miraculous phenomenon of this existence or simply, simply, I'm sorry, existence of simply experiencing the presence of life itself. Expressing as you, not through you, but as you. Pause and direct your attention to the natural world. Breathe in the gift of the air. Feel the solidness of your connection to the earth mother through the etheric roots extending from the soles of your feet deep into her belly. Look up to the sky. Witness the star nation tonight. Notice the other primordial ancestors as they collaborate with the earth mother to generate each new day's unique blend of nature's fluid tapestry. Walk softly on her belly while barefoot, especially in the spring when she is pregnant in the process of giving birth to tens of thousands of her children. Okay, that is really lovely. Now, before I go any further, I have this other book and it's called Making Room, Doing Less So God Can Do More by Billy Joss. Okay. So there was a passage that is in here that I wanted to read and it says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his, his good, pleasing and perfect will. That's Romans 12 too. So it's really interesting that I had this opened. I wanted to share it in this message so that was the perfect opportunity to do so, right? Um, forgetting not to get lost in this human 3D experience that we very much have a spiritual experience. Are we tapping into it? Are we tuning into God, tuning into the divine, tuning into Mother Earth, right? And all this beauty that God has 
created, right? Okay, so the next one is the performer. These are not alphabetical, but... There's a part of them that are. <clears throat> okay. Hmm. Not sure. I'm not really sure what the pattern of this book is. I'm going to jump around because I had the animal here too. So let's just go to the animal real quick. Oh, here's the actor. Okay. The performer, it says the best actors are the ones who inhabit their characters so deeply and profoundly that it is a very real sense that they become the character that they are playing that in a very real sense, they become that. Some of the greatest actors have so immersed themselves in a role that they have difficulty letting go of that role after the completion of the project. The most versatile of actors can play a number of different roles and many actors, amateur or professional, think, act, feel, and move like the characters they portray. It is a craft to be honed and practiced daily. Improvisational theater provides opportunities for the various characters that live inside of us to come out in expression. Even spontaneous interactions are sometimes opportunities to be an actor for a few brief moments. Shakespeare wrote, wrote it, all the world's a stage and all the men and women are merely players. Whether you consider yourself an actor or not, this ancestor can help you in your daily interactions with others by helping you be comfortable with the various roles you find yourself portraying in life. It says you've been feeling stuck in certain roles in your life, such as, I'm sorry, such that you feel like you no longer have the freedom to be your, yourself for fear or rejection or disapproval. By being so immersed in these habitual roles, you feel like you've simply, you're simply performing with no substance in the performance, acting them out, but disconnected from who you are inside. It's just going through the motions. It's like Groundhog's Day, right? Continuing this way can only lead to greater feelings of emptiness and disassociation. It's time to make some changes and to take some risks by courageously trying out different personas. If you are overly security conscious, be more adventurous. If you tend to be out to be outgoing and extroverted, make it a point to be more introspective and quieter. Like a great actor, sink into any of these roles and try them on. Take on acting class where you'll have the opportunity to practice various parts. Let go of your fears of others' disapproval and you'll find that your vitality and confidence will increase. Isn't that interesting, right? If you were to look at your, you can start with how do you dress for the day, right? Your wardrobe. What does your wardrobe tell you who you are, right? Do you ever uh, wear something that is seemingly out of character for you, right? Um, just kind of thinking about that and what, what might you do or experience differently to kind of come out of your shell, right? Let's see. We have the master DNA. I feel like that's going to be back here. <clears throat> Okay, the master DNA, as mentioned above, one of the cards has its own exceptional place in, the, in these cards. The master ancestor DNA throughout billions of years. DNA has been the bridge between the primordial prehistoric archetype and ultimately biological ancestors. This foundational ancestor is one that travels in sy symmetrical intertwined pairs 
and precedes and informs all sentient life, the essence of life that is so much more than just a molecule. Scientists have speculated that the first DNA appeared about 4 billion years ago, a few hundred thousand years after the Earth was formed. Though there are scientific theories and speculations as to the origins of DNA as it relates to how life began on Earth, this person here would like to focus on the myth mythological story that speaks to the soul's reality rather than to the ordinary realities to which we customarily find explanation for the great mystery of life. More than four billion years ago, the beings we call DNA traveling in, in symmetrically intertwined pairs across time and space arrived here on our planet just as this fiery orb was beginning to cool and the oceans were making their debut. DNA came from a faraway galaxy or perhaps even an alternate universe and some of them landed on Earth, embedding themselves in the slightly cooler oceans. These sub-microscopic beings immediately began drawing from the resources and sustenance, sustenances available, adapting and changing as needed, organizing themselves in collectives that emerged as constantly evolving life forms. These collectives were able to adapt to the particular circumstances of the environment in order to bring forth the rudiments of organic life. Over billions of years, these collectives continued to organize and reorganize in remarkable and miraculous collaboration with the predominant ecology of the era. Even though five major extinctions that took place on, even through the five major extinctions that took place on Earth, these beings survived and continued to adapt to ever changing conditions and over eons produced a very a vast array of life forms that were able to exist in a variety of environmental conditions. So this speaks of adaption and what areas of your life do you need to adapt, right? I could read a lot more, but I'm not going to here. Um, <clears throat> the next one that we have here is the healer in the, the speaking of compassion. At the root of all healing is heartfelt compassion. There are some important distinctions between sympathy, empathy, and compassion. Sympathy is when you pity someone which casts the receiver in a less than position, one where he or she is viewed as not being capable. This is the calling card of the rescuer in us, a road that has a few pitfalls. Empathy is an expression of caring where the person typically resonates with what the other person is feeling such that they sometimes experience similar feelings. So like being an empath, right? You pick up other people's feelings. With empathy, there is an inherent risk of taking on too much of other person's suffering and getting burnt out. So if you are an empath, you must learn how to set physical and psychic boundaries and often find ways to discharge the emotions that you picked up from another. So empaths can be like that sponge, right? And so it's like um, bringing out that the, what energies, what emotions and such are not yours. So in learning how to discern what is yours as an empath and what is not. Um, Compassion is a detachment involvement where you show up with a wholehearted presence for another, but you do not take on another suffering. Birth from the wounds and suffering you have experienced in your life, your capacity for healing has flourished. You were naturally drawn to healing your wounds and in the process discovered your own healing gifts that you now offer to the world. So this often would speak of the wounded healer, right? So the healer is somebody who has been wounded themselves and they, they go through this healing process themselves and now their gifts are expanded to help others, right? It's time to step out and offer your gifts in service. As a sensitive and empathetic soul, you have the natural ability to sense what another person is feeling often before they themselves are aware of it. Yet because it is of this sensitivity, you found yourself at times absorbing and taking on another person's suffering, often without recognizing the source of the discomfort. 
to do any type of healing work, developing clear physical, emotional, and psychic boundaries is essential. Ones where you make the choice as to who and what you let in and who or what you keep out. In sharing your healing gifts with others, it's also important to remember to give yourself to give to yourself in order to maintain balance, right? So if you can imagine being like a car that needs gas, right? You, um, depending upon if you didn't know that you were a healer or becoming a healer or whatever that was, um, you may have run, you started your day out with a half a tank of gas or energy, okay? And so you go out and people are drawing on your energy and you're not aware of it, right? And so you run yourself out and you come home drained every day. Um, and you continue to do this. And then if, if you keep, if you don't go and fill that tank back up, right? Then there is nothing to work with. So every day as a healer, it is an essential that you take time to recharge, to replenish your tank, if you will, to set boundaries, to recognize how much can you take on, because you might not be asking for it or looking for it, but that's why learning what is yours and what is not, it takes time to understand this. Um, and then realizing if you have taken on something, it's about clearing your energy field, transmuting that energy, resting, relaxing, recharging, charging you back up to full. And then it's like every day, do you allow yourself to go back to empty? Will you start to learn that? No, that doesn't serve you or anyone else, right? So you might allow yourself to be, you know, drained at a certain point, but then it's like, no, I come back and I recharge. I, I clear, transmute, release, you know, delete, and then I recharge, I do what charges me up, and then I go out again, right? So this is just awareness for this. Okay, we're going to talk about the animal here and the instinct. <clears throat> I was sure it was right here, but... Here it is, instinct. The closest animal ancestors we have are the family of great apes. Science has determined that we share 99% of our DNA with chimpanzees. It was about 2 million years ago that through this lineage, humans were birthed and evolved over time to become the modern day version. Since animals are largely instinctual and we live in monkey bodies, it's through our bodies that we can discern just how closely rela related we are to other animals. Over millennia, self-reflective conscious, consciousness appeared where we could be aware of our own thoughts and feelings in the form of memories, anticipations, and analysis. Yet our thought process can so often take us away from being fully present in the moment, removing us from awareness of our instinct, which is in charge of our survival. Instinct can, can and is often conditioned to misinterpret threats when they aren't really there, particularly when we one has traumatic experiences growing up. Societal and cultural conditioning remove us further from our instinctual selves and from our very animal nature that exists in our ancestral DNA. <clears throat> it says you are not in tune with your body or your instinctual self due to various life experiences and conditioning you have learned to deny or override the messages from your body. No need to view the sensations you're experiencing as threats to your survival or ones to be ignored out of fear. These sensations are rooted in your instincts and beg for your attention. They will provide you clues as to what is going on that can help you determine a choice of action. Even if it is to be still for a period of time, Breathing slowly and deeply will help you perceive and receive these sensations and impulses. They are urging you to discover and experience the emotions 
that are trapped by your conditioning and denial. Let go and surrender to these sensations and emotions. It will allow you to clear them and in doing so give you more consistent awareness of your instinctual self. Movement in the form of exercise, dance, yoga, or simply walking while breathing consciously will help you become more alert to your body's signals, right? Um, do you just move through life and like everything's is the way it is? Or are you tapping into that heightened awareness, right? Like when you get goosebumps or um, you can, you can feel or sense energies, right? Okay, so that was 25 minutes, I think, for this reading. I think we are just going to wrap this up again. Um, stay positive. There's a lot going on here with this, right? Being a healer, um, adapting maybe to that healing energy, right? Wearing that the hat of the healer, right? It's got the performer. How many hats are you wearing in your life? Um, what do your instincts tell you about that, right? And um, the cycle of life, right? The earth, the giver of life. What's going on in this situation? You may be going through a healing, a healing situation, adapting to a situation um, trust your instincts in this situation. I want to say thank you for joining me. I hope you have an amazing day. Take care.